what is good we're back a little bit different location had some issues but uh in the casa so not as fun to look at looks like a mental institution uh but we got our guy austin how you doing man what's up man happy to be here happy to talk some rookies today some running backs this is going to be a good one we got some rookie running backs for your pleasure uh, we ripped through a bunch of wide receivers. There'll still be some more that we'll talk about, and I'm sure we'll double back to get those. But we wanted to get rolling on the running backs now that the combine is over. So we are going to do a little bit of a rankings. These are going to be mostly Austin's rankings. Um, I'm not through quite enough to say stamp everything uh, for me. And I, I'm mostly through the back end guys that I just want to make sure none of those guys are going to come up here is, is more so. So I think most of the guys we're going to talk about tonight, I've I've studied at least three or four games and and reviewed a bunch of the analytics and stats. So he's going to kind of tell you where he's at. I'm going to pitch in and say, this is kind of where I'm at. Um, And then we'll put him up against guys in sort of rookie drafts that are around their same position. So going to kind of get a little hodgepodge of everything here. So I think it'll be a good, good little show for you. Ready to roll Austin. I'm ready, man. Ready. All right. Who do you have as the 2024 RB one in this rookie class right now? So I got the the NFL combine probably got to me a little too much, man. And I've actually changed my RB one. It's Trey Benson now, right? Ooh. That four three nine forty time, love that, man. That was so good. That was so reassuring to see. He scored a nine point seven eight out of ten on his Ross score. That is fortieth out of seventeen hundred and forty five running backs from nineteen eighty seven to twenty twenty four. Again. 40 time was 439 which is 97th percentile you love to see it six foot 216 pounds casey you know i'm a sizist mm. i love my big running backs i love big receivers i do i just um that that's me man you, you know it you know it. and for him to come in at six foot 216 was just so good to see man so i uh i, I just want to say man for what it's worth Brees hall ran a 439 jonathan taylor also ran a 439 they're 511 11, 217, 510, 226. So I'm not saying Trey Benson's going to be the next Brees Hall, Jonathan Taylor. I'm just saying as far as speed and size, he is right there neck and neck with them. Yeah, I was, it's a little, you know, when you go back and you see what he was listed at, it was, he was listed a little heavier and maybe 6'1". He comes into the combine a little lighter at 216 mm-hmm. um, and six foot even. You know, I don't know if he was maybe embellishing the playing weight or maybe slimmed down to put up the numbers of kind of what he did. So a little interesting there, but no, certainly no concern. Everything was was up to snuff and awesome. Uh, Love to see it for Trey Benson. So what else you got for for Trey? Give us some some good rationale of, you know, I don't think you did anything crazy by moving him, you know, from seven to to one i'm sure he was floating around the top for you this whole time just you know when you see something like that that's that's that can can really help you move the needle and jonathan brooks is you know didn't didn't get that same luxury so you know you you kind of might push him down a little bit but man that that tape is a lot of fun and and what he did brooks that is in in 23 and in only 10 games was was real fun so pitch me some bets yeah yeah, absolutely. And I just want to be clear, man. Again, I don't I do not expect him to be Brees Hall. I do not expect him to be Jonathan Taylor, even if like everything breaks right. No, man, I, I don't think he's going to get there. Right. And I think he's going to go on to have success in the NFL. Um, I want to point out that Trey Benson did make a lot of money at the NFL combine, right? Like he bolstered his NFL draft capital. He's going to receive now immense draft capital. I think he's locked into round two. Um I I firmly believe at this point, Trey Benson will be the first running back off the board in the 2024 NFL draft. I don't think that's a hot take. I think most people are are there. I think most people are going to agree with me on that. Uh, 1,132 yards, 15 total touchdowns in 2023, 6.4 yards per carry. That's 83rd percentile. Man, he is a superb outside blocker. I love that on the tape. He's a big frame. Again, six foot 216. And I think he can be a legitimate three down running back, dude, just simply due to his size, due to his sheer strength, his speed. And uh, the final thing I would like to say on Trey Benson 28 career games zero fumbles throughout his entire collegiate career so top tier ball security elite 6.9 yards per carry as a sophomore promising vision there is a lot to like about trey benson 
Yeah, I, I agree. Um, the 2023 season was good. Um, the 2022 season was was even better for him. Uh, but you, you got a guy in coming here that I don't know. I always screw this up. Has has low tread on the tires. I guess it would actually be high tread on the tires if you were comparing a tire that wasn't used all that much. Mm -hmm. um, so <laughs> yeah, th right. there's not a lot of wear on on Trey Benson outside of having a knee injury coming from Oregon. Um, and then he kind of thought he was falling behind New Norvell, went over to Florida State, and the rest is history. Um, I I usually go regular season stats, so that way everybody's on the same playing field. So sometimes our stats may differ. I just want to kind of point that out a little bit. Oh, but that's a in, good point. Yeah, in in eight in twenty two, I mean this guy was was ridiculous. He had thirty runs of ten plus or more, and twenty two runs of fifteen plus or more. His breakaway percentage. Um, in 23 was 55.7 percent, not all that different. In, in 20, uh, 22, his missed tackles forced in 22 were 77. Um, just just incredible. His elusive rating per PFF in 2022 250. Uh, this year it was 112, which was still good for 41st. So just that 250 number is insane. Um, so like as as Austin mentioned, did a lot of things really well. 22, the PFF grade was 92.8. 23, the PFF grade was 87.5. Um, so really just all around, um, you know, really, really solid from Trey Benson here. Like I said, the attempt numbers aren't like one of these guys like Jonathan Taylor um, that have these crazy high threshold for for attempts. Only, only 138 in the regular season uh, this season for Trey Benson. So... You like to see that um, really, like you said, the fumbles, awesome, zero, zeroed out in every column there. Um, not bad. Really, you know, maybe not the best uh, in, in pass protection. It's not terrible, but he's, he's not like, oh, my God. Um, and then on top of that, maybe not quite hitting some of the receiving thresholds that you want to see. I know a lot of people like to see at least 20 receptions, and then maybe some people will say uh, more so team market share of, of receptions. Um, only 18 and 11 and 23 and 22. But when you watch him, the hands are real natural. Uh, he made a really sick uh, touchdown grab. I think it was Clemson in the back of the end zone, but potentially there. Uh, but I, I don't have any, you know, you, you were talking about a three down back. And I think the hands fall right in line with being able to be a three down back. I don't think he's any sort of a liability. Actually, I think it's kind of plus. They just didn't really throw to him a whole lot. So, um, Benson, I would tend to agree right up there near the top uh, for me. Right, should I? Should I uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's talk about my RB two. And let me just let me just be clear, man. This is one A, one B. I think it might be the yeah. cool thing to get back in on this player. I'm about to talk about. It, it might be the cool thing when the actual draft comes around. Like you're, I'm talking your dynasty rookie drafts to put this guy as the RB one again, and it's Jonathan Brooks, right? To no yeah. one's surprise, everybody knows I love Jonathan Brooks. He's been my RB one for several months. I just nicked him down. I, I don't even think it's a nick down on him. It's more of like. You know, I just, you know, the NFL Combine kind of bolstered a handful of these running backs draft capital. And whereas like Jonathan Brooks just kind of sat still right in that same spot. And um, man, I, I think that he is one of the most talented backs in this class. He's someone who I think has a real chance when we look back in two, uh, one to two years from now that he could be a top 10 dynasty running back. I really think like that that, that is within the realm of of outcomes for Jonathan Brooks. And here's what I'll say about him, man. He had 1,425 yards this season while while missing four games, okay? That doesn't happen on accident. Like, those are some big boy numbers, and he missed a oh, sure. big, big chunk of the season. Comes in at six foot, 216 pounds, so I believe identical Same height and weight, Benson. right? Yeah, wild. Um, for, for those of you who don't know, man, he, he, tore, he suffered a torn ACL in November that ended his season, and, you know... It looked like prior to that injury, he was going to kind of, I don't want to say run away with it, but it felt like he was the consensus RB1 for, for some time. And he still may get there, man. Um, I, I Again, I, I, Trey Benson is, I'm, I'm sorry, Jonathan Brooks is is someone that not only should be on your radar, but he's he's going to be, I, th I think he's going to be a first round pick in Dynasty rookie draft. I think he's going to find a way to get in th at the end of the first 
early second at, at the latest, man. I, I don't think he should be anything later than than an early second. Right now, he's a he's at the one eleven in my rankings. Trey Benson is at the one ten. This is dynasty superflex rookie drafts. I'm talking, and uh, I actually, yeah, I don't know, man. I got two running backs at the end of the first. I don't think most people are going to agree with me on it, but but we'll see. As we get closer, I think people are going to, you know, once they're going, uh, we're talking so many receivers, whether it's Troy Franklin or Brian Thomas or Adunze, neighbors, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., all these, you know, high-quality wide receivers are going so early in first rounds of, of your drafts. I think people are going to be like, you know what, man? I need to get the RB1 or the RB2 in this class before I get, like, the receiver 7 or 8, if that makes sense. People might... Yeah draft for position rather than uh, value if that makes sense and that's not only the most that's not always like the right or logical choice but I think that we're going to see that um, I think that uh, Jonathan Brooks has close to 449 speed uh, I think that he's probably man he should be a second round pick in the NFL draft I don't know if he's going to go there it's going to be day two. I think it's going to be the third round at the latest. Um, and for what it's worth, Bijan Robinson scored a touchdown every 16.3 carries. Jonathan Brooks scored a touchdown every 14.9 carries at Texas. <laughs> I've said that stat before. It doesn't mean a whole lot. I, I just like throwing it out there, man. I think Jonathan Brooks is is really a special talent. Um, 20 years old. And uh, again, just, just a quick reminder eight consecutive games of 98 plus rushing yards this season so every time he stepped foot on the field not only was he consistent he crushed yeah yeah jonathan brooks um is like i said i I think you put it well there i i would probably put him tier one benson and brooks um did like i said didn't get the luxury of being at the combine and and getting the hype machine rolling again but i I think you you were spot on when saying he was probably going to run away with the rb1 and he kind of had there for a minute and then there were some people already in camp benson and that just fired it back up a good combine so um i I think what you it's, it's unfortunate that you saw the acl tear because he was on on quite a uh on a quite a path there mock Mm -hmm. track draft database has him in the third round right now um which you know, it was kind of what you just said. I if, if without the ACL, I think it's second all day. And I think somebody could maybe go late second on him. Uh, there is a, a lot to like about Jonathan Brooks. What you really get here is you get kind of a I don't want to necessarily just say just a one cut runner, but he, he's he's got such a good jump cut and his his lateral movement is so strong. Um, you, you're getting a three down back here, I believe, much like the the uh, Benson that we just talked about. Got some good size. Receiving game is very solid uh, for uh, Jonathan Brooks there. He had 29 targets and 25 receptions. So, But it, he looks very comfortable in the receiving game, uh, as does Benson. So I think both of them are plus in that area for me. Uh, 6.1 yards per attempt, which is you know very solid missed like i said missed missed the end of the year here uh, only 187 attempts but put up 1135 yards that was good for 20th overall and 10 tds um and he's he's breaking off 10 yard and 15 yard runs at a pretty high clip 24 10 yard plus runs 15 um plus yard runs he had 16 of those that was good for 26th overall um so just a, a lot to really like with him i wouldn't say he's necessarily a, a powerful runner and but he's definitely not scared to go between the tackles he seems to like to kind of grind it out between the tackles um and i think because of the nature of his running style there he he thwarts a lot of attempts off of him but it's not necessarily kind of running people over but he does um break a decent amount of tackles 63 to be exact this year um in only 10 games so that was good for 11th overall so that kind of all encompasses uh, kind of what I was saying there, but a a lot to like with, with Brooks, the acceleration and the speed are both there. I think he's very good at on the second level when he gets up there making defenders miss with, with, like I said, he's, he's kind of got that laterally jump cuts around, but they're so Mm -hmm. quick and so fast and they're not these big, he's not taking these big wide angles. They're so decisive and then right back up kind of North and South. Um, and in the like I said, the acceleration out of there is typically there every once in a while. You're, you're, you're seeing it where yeah, I'd like to see him kind of press the gas a little faster out of there because, you know, it's possible. Um, but I think there's a lot to like about Jonathan Brooks. I've heard um, the Dynasty Stock Exchange guy 
go with Aaron Jones comp, which I think is is pretty solid. I, I can't after he said that I couldn't kind of get it out of my mind yep. of when I was watching it. Um, so if that's the case, then then wheels up Jonathan Brooks. You'd love to see that. Um, but definitely a little bit better pedigree, a um, little bit better size. Um, unfortunately, we don't get to see what the speed is. But when you watch the tape, it's it's really it's not like, oh, my God, speed. But it is it's pretty solid speed. And the, I think the acceleration is even better. So I agree with you. Jonathan Brooks, 1A for me and Benson, 1B. So I think that would be kind of the first uh, line of um, demarcation here. How about let's let's run it into a rookie draft here. Would you would you take either would you take A.D. Mitchell over either one of these guys? So I have A.D. Mitchell at the 201 in my rankings. This is super flex rookie rankings we're talking. Um, I have Trey Benson and Jonathan Brooks, again, 110 and 111. So they're really close. I, I guess you could say they're kind of in the same tier for me, but no, short answer is I have A.D. Mitchell lower than both of these running backs. I feel good about it. Um, A.D., there's there's a lot to like about A.D., but I, I am if, if I'm on the clock, man, I am taking both of these running backs over A.D., and most people probably won't agree with me on it. That's okay. Uh, I, there's a lot of other wide receivers in this class that I prefer over A.D. That's where I'm at. What about you? Well, I think, I think you hit the nail uh, s- sort of on the head there. Uh, I like... I think I would probably. Hmm, this is tough. I, it's I, close. I like, it's close. Yeah. Um, hmm. I know you don't like Lad, so I won't. I won't put him up against Lad. But how about how about Troy Franklin? Oh man, the uh, <laughs> the fade has gone too far for Troy Franklin. I think I really do. I think uh, people are overreacting from the NFL Combine. I have Troy Franklin at the one oh nine, so he is the pick before Trey Benson, two spots before Jonathan Brooks, so even closer. Yeah, so we're dancing, we're dancing right around it there. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people will say, you know, just take the best player available or whatever, and and trade for need. But it, it, I think it would kind of depend between Ad Mitchell and and those two running backs on kind of where the state of my team was. If I was really running back needy, I have no problem with taking one of those guys in front of him. And I know some people will disagree mm-hmm. with that style. And and for the most part, I can go best player available and then and trade for my needs. Um, but I'm also not like balls to the wall, guns blazing for A.D. Mitchell and trying to make, you know, I'm kind of lukewarm. Some some days I'm I'm really into him and other days like the Georgia tape is really good. And then some of the some of the Texas tape just leaves something to be desired. And Mm -hmm. um, obviously all the tool set and and skills are there. You you could see that, um, you know, a ton of speed. But then, you know, he murks the murks, the 40 and and the speed stuff and then the drill stuff. It was kind of hit or miss kind of what you saw on the field. So, um, you know. I think slightly into the two backs right now. Um, so I'm, I, I'm, I'm with you though. Um, all right, let's keep it moving. Who, who you got as your RB three. So Casey, this is, this is far, far, far away from the other two running backs in my rankings. Again, Jonathan Brooks, one eleven, Trey Benson, one ten. I got Braylon Allen as my RB three right now, all the way down at two Oh six. So a pretty good gap between them about seven slots between, between the next running back. And uh, Br- man, I don't feel nearly as comfortable with Braylon Allen as I do with, with the other two running backs. Um, and, and I can try my best to sell you on Braylon Allen. I do like Braylon Allen still. Um, I like, I like, you know, now we're talking mid second round pick of your dynasty rookie drafts. And this is where to me, the prospects are not nearly as valuable um, or they're not nearly as polished. They're not nearly as, um, promising i feel like we're getting to the point where they're more of dart throws to a certain degree right um uh, a little bit lower of a hit rate at this point and uh but 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 braylon allen man there there is a handful of of points that that i'm going to bring up a lot that i do like about him 1268 rushing yards at the age of 17 right yeah. he left high school a year early to go to college and, and like, dude, almost drops 1,300 yards. Again, 17 years old. For what it's worth, for what it's worth, Casey, his favorite team in high school, the Chargers. Mm. would be pretty cool. <laughs> would be pretty cool. I think he would shoot up rankings way too high. Uh, I'm, I'm here for it, man. I would love to see it. Uh, again, 12 touchdowns. 1,268 yards as a true 17-year-old freshman. That will absolutely get your attention. Sophomore year, 18 years old. 1237 yards crushed Ohio State I mean crushed them (laughs) and it's it's the reason I bring that up 
you know, they're always one of the best teams. And it's when you dominate these not only ranked teams, but the top tier teams in college at the age of 17, the age of 18. Again, it's just going to get your attention. It's it, it means a lot to me. And um, it doesn't happen on accident. He came in at six foot one. 235 pounds i believe is that correct let me let me yeah, double was, check I just, yeah i got it right here six one two thirty five maybe maybe even down five to ten pounds there um yep. and, and people were kind of hoping that maybe he would play at that weight moving forward so so we shall see now we thought he was going to come in at i believe it was six two two forty five all off season and then mm-hmm. comes in again like six one two thirty five Perfectly fine. Like I'm not going to be mad about that. If you're running back and you're six one, six two, six foot, dude, I don't care. It the height doesn't matter to me. Um, it's the weight that's always going to be significantly more valuable, right? And uh, I, I, you know, maybe he even drops to like two thirty, two twenty five, and gets a little bit thinner. I don't know, man. I'm I'm not necessarily sure what his NFL playing weight's going to be. Uh, we just know that it, th- the size is an absolute check. That's not an issue for Braylon Allen. Uh, Thirty two inch vertical jump uh 99 broad 26 bench press reps of 225 let me say something man not that this matters much 26 reps right you know who had 27 Blake Corum yeah Blake Corum man he's he dudes 57 205 i mean come on Braylon Allen pound for pound man you got to you got to get your weight up man he's Blake got Corum long arms he's got to get him up further you know <laughs> i know i know that's fair that's just, actually that's a really good point that's uh, that's factual the last thing i'll say about him um 3494 rushing yards 5.9 yards per carry no stage was too big for him at the collegiate level uh and and i just think not only was he built in a lab but but to score 36 touchdowns in 35 collegiate games you know it's it's impressive it really was and he he crushed some really really good college defenses so uh, i liked a lot of what i saw from him but his combine it could have been more impressive and uh i i don't think his draft capital is going to be day two uh, i'm sorry it, i think it'll be the third to fourth round in between that range uh we'll see what happens man but he's someone that i think is worth the dart throw mid second and i i did a rookie draft last night a mock man he fell to me at the 209 so three spots later than where i have him ranked for what it's worth yeah. so how do you feel about braylon allen casey I'm I'm probably not quite as high on him, but he's certainly mm-hmm. a polarizing prospect here as we've gone through. He's he's a guy who was a darling and everybody was excited for him and now he's lost a little bit of luster. Um, but there are still certainly, you know, a, a a fan base of of Braylon Allen's and I wouldn't say I'm quite as high. I'd I'd probably have him down a few spots here. Um how far I'm not sure because like I said, I haven't done the back end. I haven't haven't gotten to Audric Estime and and Bucky and uh, you know Will Shipley, and I'm not saying he's down there with those guys. I just want to make sure that that I don't have those guys up there. So I would probably put him down a few guys here. But to me, he's he's might be the biggest pile of clay um, to kind of mold mm-hmm. uh, at the next level. He has the, the upside is is through the roof with what he could be uh, with the size and potential speed. Didn't run the forty, um, so I was thinking maybe since he was down that much, he was gonna run the forty, but he did not. Um, so uh, we don't really know what the speed, the long speed is. It seems pretty good, but, you know, not spectacular. Uh, but he's, he's a big boy. Uh, but, you you know, like you said, he was awesome in 21, awesome in 22, and then 23. You're like, all right, he's still okay, but kind of what happened? Um, well, what happened is, is you get a big philosophy switch. Um, you went from what was standard at Wisconsin forever um, that everybody for the, as long as you've been alive know what Wisconsin is going to be about. And then all of a sudden Luke Fickle comes in and he hires uh, Phil Longo as his OC and they mm-hmm. go from what mm-hmm. they've been forever to an air raid spread from a power run game. Well, a power run game, that's that's Braylon Allen all day. Now you move into this uh, air raid spread. That, that's not really what he signed up for. That's not what he's been used to. That's, aren't, that's, the, you know, that's not the group of guys and the – um, personnel maybe even at Wisconsin at the time. Now, I know Transfer Portal can help you move guys in and out a little faster, but that's not really what they were potentially set up for. So, you know, Fickles, if he's going to stay around, which I think he will, 
has got, got to integrate his guys in there. And Braylon Allen was, wasn't his guy, and I don't think this was the best fit for him. Now, what did come of that is you got 30 targets and 28 receptions with only one drop, so you got to see some hands a little bit from him. Um, now, what that was in team market share running that air raids, I don't have that in front of me at this moment, so maybe that's not that great, but it was nice to see him that he can catch. Um, and I watched the combine interview, and he said, you know, it got him to – do some different things and got him a little ready for maybe a couple more things that he might be doing in the NFL, as opposed to what he was kind of doing at Wisconsin for the first couple of years. So um, I don't know that it's necessarily fair to judge that last year. Uh, also a little nicked up uh, through that, that final year in 23. So a lot going on with Braylon Allen, a lot of uh, transition happening. Uh, so I don't want to be terribly hard on him because there's a lot to like, I, I wish that he would, um, uh, I know that there are certainly tons of clips out there that and in games where he runs really hard and he looks like that big input. But there's other times where it's like, man, lean, lean into somebody. There's there's great times where he gets his, this big fellas dropping mm -hmm. his pads low and he's hammering somebody. And there's other times where it's just like he just kind of looks like he's meandering kind of through there. But the, the, the footwork, you know, seems he's he's quick on his feet for how big of a guy he is. Um, but. That'd be probably my biggest criticism is I'd like to see him just finish every run a little stronger every single time. Um, you know, I don't want to, there was, you know, Chris Carson back in the day coming, coming oh, yeah. out of Oklahoma state there, you know, was a bit more of a finesse runner for his size. And I'm not saying that, that Allen is a finesse runner by any means. He's definitely got more power to his game, but you know, as the NFL thing went on and it ended up in being a bad neck injury for Carson that got him out of there. But you start to see more physicality in that size and frame mature into it and learn how to hammer with it. And I think if Braylon Allen can learn how to do that a little more, um, you know, not effectively, uh, a little more. What's the word I'm looking for? Do it a little more often. Uh, I was looking for another word, but we'll go off. Do it a little more often. I, I would be a little more in, but. I'm not out. I'm not I'm not one of these guys who gets all been out of shape about certain metrics and certain things and taking guys off my board. I think he'll probably get pretty good draft capital because he is pretty intriguing. Mock draft database has him at, at the third round right now. Um, I would probably take another guy or two before him. But mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, once you get down to that back of the half of that two, taking a swing, this is this is all upside, baby. Right. You know, and is that kind of why you like to take the the swing here? Yeah, that's really the main reason. Like, you just said it best. And let me just be clear. Like, Braylon Allen is so much closer to my RB4, RB5 range than RB2, right? It, he is so much closer to falling further in my rankings rather than rising, right? I don't think there's a world that exists where he jumps Brooks, he jumps Benson. But there's definitely a world where my 4 and 5 jump him, right? That's kind of where, where I'm at. It's... uh. And I, man, like the combine, uh, do you mind if I just go right into my RB4 right sure. here? Do you, is there yeah. anything else you want to say about Braylon? No, 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 that's perfect. Let's go. Uh, um, so I'll, I'll just say it, man. Jalen Wright, Jalen Wright, he feels like he should be my RB3, but I, I got him at RB4 at the moment. Um, I have him at the 207 in my personal rankings. Braylon Allen's at the 206, so they are right next to each other. Uh, but man, Jalen Wright, he is, he's fun. He is exciting. He's electric. Uh, 7.4 yards per attempt, which was first in college football. A 4-3-1. Uh, I'm sorry, what did he run? A 4-3-8 40 three, time. Yeah. Holy cow, man. He, I mean, talk about someone who, who made a lot of money at the NFL Combine. Talk about, talk about someone who absolutely benefited their draft capital um, and I think that Jalen Wright checks so many boxes here here's what here are some of the boxes that he checks in my opinion right it's the speed the 438 speed you love to see it production he had over a thousand rushing yards in 2023 the size he came in at 510 210 great size perfectly fine man Efficiency, another box that Jalen Wright checks, 7.4 yards per attempt in 2023. Again, that was first in college football. Durability, another box that he checks. He played 12 plus games in 2022 and 2023. And then pass blocking, another box that Jalen Wright checks. He gave up zero sacks in 2023. So, I mean, man, there's there's <laughs> there's not much that I don't love about Jalen Wright. And like as I'm elaborating on it, on him, I'm like, 
why the hell do I have Braylon Allen ahead of him? <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm sitting here and I feel like I'm so much more passionate and, and energetic talking about him. Uh, yeah. and, and listen to this, Jalen Wright, he was absurd in the open field as a wide receiver. He, he had the same amount of missed tackles forced five as Marvin Harrison Jr. Mm. on 45 less receptions. Okay, so he was the epitome of elusive. And in addition, Wright also had another 43 force missed tackles as a runner. And and his big playability, it, it was blatantly obvious in 2023. Yeah. He ranked 16th in breakaway yards at 526 on just 136 rushing attempts, which was 96th in college football. So that is proof that Jalen Wright has true home run ability and great vision. What do you what do you got to say, Casey? 16th in breakaway percentage, 52.1. You know, I think efficient is is the best thing you can kind of tag with. Um, Jalen Wright. And, you know, I talked about him with JB as a sleeper. Well, sleeper no more. And we've, we've kind of covered this a little bit in some of the last episodes that we've done. But um, and the biggest thing I have next to him after I scouted him when I did that show with JB was combine exclamation point. And if this guy blows up yep. the combine and here we are. Um, so I think ma- him making a lot of money is a great way to put it. I, I can't see him making it out of the third round at this point. Uh, and maybe somebody even says, hey, we're going to take that in the second because that's, you know, late second. That looks like a whole lot of fun. Um, you know, I think I think more than one running back will go in the second, um, which which other one it'll be. I'm not sure. Maybe it'll be Jonathan Brooks. Maybe it'll be Jalen Wright. Maybe it'll be Marshawn Lloyd. Maybe it'll be Blake Corum by his old coach. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I burst and speed were, were two of the things that popped out to you right away. And the combine, you know, basically, I, I think I can sum it up like this. The combine basically put – the two pieces of things together. This is what you saw on the field. And that's what the combine showed you. It wasn't really any surprise how good everything was. The broad jump was one of the best we've ever seen uh, at the combine from, from Jalen Wright. Um, S- second ever, correct? Second yeah. best broad ever. His, his yards per route run were 1.33. That was 36 overall, 22 receptions, only one drop elusive rating, 132.2. That's a PFF stats So take that for what it is. 20th overall yak per attempt eighth and 4.35 so my man was uh, runs over 10 yards or more 35 uh, that was 20th overall yards of 15 yard runs of 15 yards or more 19 that was 15th overall so all of these stats that me and austin have just given to you ever just all scream uh you know explosive and efficient you know another guy who not a whole lot of wear on the body there uh gone through two pretty good season at tennessee he's 20 he will be 21 in april that way you know we gave good points for um braylon allen being super young being only 20 well jalen wright's not all that old either so big 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 positives um clocked in at 23 miles per hour gps and season and then we've pointed this out i know austin you tweeted it out we've talked about it on the show but the first five yards in the split 15.66 15.66 miles per hour, mm-hmm. a chain 14.94 miles per hour. So just all of those things pointing to how explosive uh, this guy is leading to the effectiveness. And this, this is who I would put in the next tier of guys for me. Um, I would, I would go Jalen right here. So uh, before we move on to the next guy, or if you have anything else to say, um, how about Keon Coleman or Jalen Wright? I have Keon ahead of him, and uh, you know, as Casey, as we go through this, ex- so these exercises are so good, man. Because like, as we go through them, as we like really dive deep into these players, it makes me look at everything from a different perspective. And uh, I think that the gap is really, really close. I have Keon ahead of him right now. Um, it's interesting, like. At this point, I think Keon Coleman's going to get second round draft capital super early, though. Like. T. Higgins, Michael mm-hmm. Pittman Jr. range, right? Like 33, 34, 35 overall, Debo Samuel range. Whereas Jalen Wright, man, if things break right, he's going to be somewhere or uh, somewhere in the mid to late second, probably. Would you agree? Is that kind of where, where you think Jalen Wright's NFL draft capital will be? Yeah, I, I I think I think second, third, and then Keon Coleman, I think you're right on 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 cue there with, you know early early ish second yeah and i i don't think keon's gonna actually be a first round draft pick in the nfl draft um but yeah getting back to your question i have keon ahead of him it's very close though yeah what about um, you 
I, I probably before the combine definitely had Keon ahead of him, and now we're we're I, mm-hmm. I probably am, am putting Wright. If if Wright can get anywhere in the second or third draft capital range, there, then I would probably probably take Wright. I still and it's I'm not an anti Keon Coleman guy. I didn't want to take him in the first round. I didn't think the NFL should take him in the first round, but now we get into that mid second, and I'm I'm all in on Keon Coleman just to to take the shot on upside, kind of like we're talking about with with uh, Braylon Allen there. Uh, but I think, I think I would take right uh, there. It's so fair. Yeah, it's close. Uh, you want to, you want to jump in? How about, oh, oh, how about lad McConkey? So, cause I don't know where you, where you settle in on him. So lad or uh, Jalen, Wright. I'm assuming actually have, you have key on above lad. Correct. I actually have Jalen, Wright The pick in front of lad McConkey. So I got them next to each other. Um, I just you know I'm taking Laddie. So. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. You probably have Ladd uh, candidly over Jalen Wright, um, but it's Oops. close. For, it's close for me, man. Yeah, um, I, it's close. I, I, the gap is closed. I, it, yeah, yeah. Um, but should I uh, transition to the RB five in this class? Yeah. Are you ready? Anything else you want to rip about uh, Jalen Wright? No, I. I, I I liked him beforehand. Yeah. So, you know, we, we talked about it in the post combine show and a little bit in the mock that we did. It's just, you know, you get a little confirmation bias and maybe right will stink, but all the things point to right being good. I liked him as a sleeper. So now that all this stuff is trending up, let's go right. Yeah, um, absolutely, man. And he is an early declare. Last thing I'll say about him, he could be a steal. But my RB5 in this class where I'm at right now, I have Blake Corum. Mm. I have him towards the end of the second round in Dynasty rookie drafts. Love He's at it. the 210 in my rankings. Man, his uh, talk about someone with incredible collegiate production. And Casey, when I evaluate players, when I go through the entire process, I would say probably the most important thing to me is production. I think that I think that trumps everything. I think it's the most important thing at the end of the day. Did you produce right? And yes, like there's other players that I, I that I actually am interested in, like Xavier Leggett, who did not produce for four years, right? Didn't produce till his fifth year. But uh, produ- again, sh- just production. It matters so much to me. Uh, that's really what what just grabs my attention right away, especially when you produce early, right? When you produce early, you're never going to be mad about it. Blake Corum, talk about someone with wild collegiate production. He was a hair under five foot eight, 205 pounds at the NFL Combine, four five three forty time. I thought that was really good. I thought yeah, that was like great uh, uh, very, very positive. Uh, made me think even higher of Blake Corum. I just, I thought it was really solid stuff. He was, he was faster than most people anticipated. Yeah, it was, um, it was enough to not have it be like, oh, see, he's so slow. Like, so I think that's, that's yeah. good. That was really good. And man, like, I know I'm a numbers guy. I'm, I'm more of an analytics first guy. But if you just stop w- with the numbers for a second, right, you just you watch the film with Blake Corum and you see how fast he hit those holes. Mm. He just gets in and out of those drills so yeah. quick. If you watch him side by side with some of the other running backs, dude, he dusted them. Did you see yeah. it may have been Marshawn Lloyd? Yeah, was it? it was. Um, and yeah, I, I'm okay. starting to he, he's actually been growing on me a little bit more. Wow. I just so I, I was watching. So I was watching that and. He, yeah, dude, he just he looked like an NFL running back from that. And it looked like his I guess the number one takeaway I had from that was his vision. Like Blake Corum looked like he knew exactly where the holes were, knew exactly what to do. His footwork was phenomenal. Um, and it, it just makes me think like Corum could be way better than where I currently have him ranked at the, the 210. And man. Everybody seems to link them to Harbaugh, the Chargers. Again, I know I just were I was yapping about that with with um, Braylon Allen, but could you imagine if if Blake Corum goes there? I think that would bolster his NFL draft capital or his dynasty draft capital astronomically. How do you feel about that? Yeah, no, I mean, what 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 we have, you know, as as opposed to. I agree with you in that in that regard, and it'll be interesting to see where his his draft capital may, you know help determine whether he's late to or maybe a little bit more mid to earlier to what's going to hold him back here is him being 24 years old in his rookie year. Um, mm-hmm. what, what people are going to knock as a negative, which is fine, man. Like, look, people are basically devaluing the running back position anyway. So you you're getting three to four years out of a running back. That's that's what you're kind of looking at him in. You're looking at you know, rosters in three years windows is, is a popular phrase. Um, but 
you know, I'm not drafting him in the first round. So I'm, I'm not, I guess I'm not like, Oh my God, he's 24. Like I think he can come in. He's, he's, he's not necessarily a piece of clay. Like you might have to mold Jalen right a little bit more and you might have to mold, mold, you know, Braylon Allen a little more. This is a finished product. This guy's ready to come in here and play NFL football immediately uh, in, in the right system, uh, you know, with the, with the right personnel around him, And, and that's, you know, big for everybody else uh, as well. But, you know, an 8.48 RAS score, which is is very good, much better than people thought it was going to be. A 6.823 cone drill, which is you know kind of showing up what uh, we were just kind of talking about those the, the quick feet, the decisiveness, the burst. Um, you know, I think the combine again matched exactly what uh, he does, and it shed light that the light that the long speed isn't a deal breaker, and his agility and quickness is great. And like you even pointed out, those drills. Um, we're absolutely awesome. So the fact that he's 24, I'm not that terribly worried about it. If I can get three or four years out of him or shit, if he comes in and he's good, trade him to somebody who's ready to win now if I'm not ready to win now. And I think he'll have some value uh, that way. But I can't see him being like a fifth rounder by any means. Somebody's going to say, hey, we can get predi-. like the NFL's only viewing you as a, about a three year deal anyway, too. So, mm-hmm. you know, obviously it's not somebody like Jalen Wright who you can get and hang on to and, and discard him at 26 or seven. Um, and he does have a lot of miles, had the had the injury in 2022. Um, but in 2022, he was PFF's number one rated uh, running back with a 96.2 score. Now, again, once it take it for what it is, uh, that's PFF's grading. I know some people don't love that. Um, but 22 was absolutely awesome. He was eighth in rush yards, fourth in TDs, only had one fumble, seventh in yards after contact, um, ninth in missed tackles force was 73, 96 first downs. That was good for second overall. Um, 15 yard runs. He had uh, 22 tied for eighth, 10, 10 yard runs. He was 36th in that. Only 11 targets and 10 receptions, but in 21 had 25 targets. Uh, and 20 receptions. So, you know, when they were throwing to him, they had Donovan Edwards. Like they were, that's who, that was the guy that they were throwing the ball to. And I'm not saying he's going to come in and not have another guy they throw the ball to, uh, but he doesn't look unnatural catching the ball. I don't know. I've said that about somebody else uh, in this class who didn't have a lot of, uh, maybe Benson Tr- there. Trey Benson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but when you saw him in the drills out there, he didn't look unnatural catching the ball. He had a season where he did catch balls. You know, I'm sure people will disqualify that for whatever reason, because it doesn't fit whatever narrative they have. Uh, but he hits, he checks those boxes. He can catch. I don't need every back in the NFL to catch 75, but it's great that, that you can, but if, if Coram can go out there and grind you out games, be a touchdown scorer, be an efficient guy, uh, then I don't really need him to do that. And, and really, you know, when it, when it comes down to it with him, like, overall from from scouting the film um you know it was my, the first thing i wrote down was just squeezes into cracks and crevices very few can and then he can kind of take you to pound town which i know that sounds like an opening line to an only fans bio but that's just blake Gorham, baby you know that's just what he does um and you know what's the marshawn lynch quote over and over and over and over you know that's 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 kind of what he can do. And now look, Corm doesn't run with that same raw power running through a motherfucker's face like like Lynch did, but he'll lean on you all game long. He just keeps coming and coming and coming. Um, he can grind the game for you. He'll kind of lull you to sleep with those three to five yard gains. Um, and it's not like he doesn't get extra yards with those hard runs. He does. Uh, but then he'll put together with that excellent vision and that contact balance. Uh, and then you see him just boom, pop one. Um, when they've been doing such a good job of limiting him all game to those couple of, you know, you know, not couple of like good runs all game, but nothing crazy. And then bang, he'll break one off. You'll see that lateral lateral agility pop. And he's just so quick and so lethal with that cutback. And then he'll just fire off a big chunk gain. Um, and he just has a nose for the end zone. Um, I just, I just don't. And again, I don't think the hands are a liability. So I, I really, really like Blake Corum. I can't move him up to the top of the class per se, be, and, and I think he's as good as any of those guys, but he should be a little bit more of a finished product of that age, and I think he is. Um, so I think properly rated is is probably right around where you have him here. Um, so, But I, I, I think if he was 21, I think he would be the RB1 for me. <laughs> um, you know, I know that's silly, but it's kind of in, in the world we're living in with running backs – you do have to kind of take some age. So we'll adjust the age a little bit down. We'll, we'll put them at four or five and I'm going to be stoked to get him, you know, mm-hmm. late first round, if that's where he keeps going or late second round, rather, if that's where he keeps going. Yeah. 
Um, the final thing I'll say about Blake Cora, man, his co- again, his I was I was going off about his college production, but I didn't even read any of the numbers. Twenty twenty one, almost eleven hundred yards, twelve touchdowns. Twenty twenty two. 1,543 yards, 19 touchdowns. And then this season in 2023, 1,362 yards, 28 touchdowns. So just to recap, the past three seasons, Blake Corum has 3,660 rushing yards, 59 total touchdowns. 59 total touchdowns. I mean, that doesn't happen. That's crazy. Like 59 touchdowns in college football in three years is absurd, man. Blake Corum is he's the textbook definition of a warrior. He is he's like he's the epitome of durable. Uh and he's just I think he's got more heart and passion than probably just about anybody on that field, man. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. And then, you know, just call him back to some of those plays, man. Like there was a run against Indiana where he goes outside. I think it was to the left side, goes outside. There's four defenders. They stop the screen. There's four defenders like bo- having him boxed in exactly mm-hmm. where he and he's mm-hmm. he's he just takes that angle to him and then he puts this just quick little move and then he is just he leaves all four of those guys running into each other like it's some sort of cartoon <laughs> and then he is just off to the races and now again not the fastest guy but the quickness and the burst uh coming out of those quick little cuts is insane that fourth and two catch late in the alabama game i know it got uh there was a there was a block in the back by rome uh, Roman Wilson on that play, but a, a huge catch in that game. And then the overtime TD is Blake Corman in a nutshell, just ridiculous, uh, making a little guy miss, thwarting another guy off of him, and then finding the end zone um, in that you know uh, second or third down run, and or maybe it was maybe second down run in, in in overtime against Bama there. So, man, I just I can't say enough good things about Blake Corum. I know it's 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 not the fun, sexy pick of some of these other guys, but it just he's he fits. He fits a need as a starting running back in the NFL, and he's got a three down uh, set. I think that that can be very beneficial. So uh, take us take us to the next guy. So the sixth and final running back that we're going to talk about today, the sixth running back in my rankings, Marshawn Lloyd. I have him at the two twelve, the final pick in the second round of dynasty rookie drafts. Man, he. I uh, threatened to fight somebody on the pod a few <laughs> episodes ago, and uh, I want to apologize because uh, it's like that Shaq mean, like, oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't familiar with your game. You know what I'm talking about, mm-hmm. Casey? You've, you've seen that picture? Oh, sure. And, um, like, I was familiar with Marshawn Lloyd's game, but, man, like, the more I dug into him, I was like, you know what? Actually, I, I, I'm starting. He's grown on me, man. I, I, I like him more than I thought I would. And this is per PFF. I'm going to rip off a few stats. This absolutely got my attention about Marshawn Lloyd. 87th percentile rushing grade. 99th percentile missed tackles forced per attempt. 99th percentile yards after contact per attempt. 100th percentile missed tackles forced per reception. Okay. I know that was a lot. That's really good. Those are some really good metrics. Coming in at 5'9", 220, that matters a lot to me, man. His size was very, very promising. He came he came in at a really good size at the NFL Combine. 4'4", 6", dude. We were just talking about Blake Horm having great 4'5", speed. For him to come in at 220 pounds and run a 4'4", 6", 87th percentile, I, just, I love to see that. So yeah. good, for, good on you, Marshawn Lloyd. That was awesome. Uh... 93rd percentile speed score right it's just again like we're talking a big heavy pound for pound heavier running back and and the fact that he was able to come in at that fast that that impressed me man it impressed me a lot 36 inch vert uh 7.1 yards per carry in 2023 if i mean if there's overall yeah crazy yeah if there's one thing that i i'm talking about with with marshawn lloyd that impresses me it it is that man that 7.1 yards per carry and not a lot of people know this, but Caleb Williams helped recruit him. He wanted to play with him at USC. Not a bad sign when the 101 vouches for you. He wants mm-hmm. to play with you. And uh, man, like he doesn't ha- he doesn't have a whole lot of tread on his tires. Right. I don't know if it's you could say it's a good thing, you could say it's a bad thing just because like, you know, usually the studs get more volume, but I guess what I'm getting at is Lloyd has fresh legs, okay? Lower tread on his tires, and his recent collegiate production, 1,052 total yards off of 129 touches. 
Nine touchdowns. Again, 7.1 yards per carry this season. I've been adjusting my rookie rankings, and Marshall and Lloyd's quickly climbing them. What about you, Casey? How do you feel about Marshall and Lloyd? Yeah, I, 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 I don't think he's kind of... I think he's kind of stayed where where I thought he was, kind of right where right, right about where where you have him. Um, I, I think that's properly rated for the most part. Some people really like him as maybe even the RB one, um, but I think the combine definitely helped his draft stock stay strong and and probably advanced a little bit, which is always good. We like we like the idea of um, draft capital can certainly lead to better opportunities faster. Um, the USC running back coach is is also on Harbaugh's staff. So, you know, mm-hmm. he's a, he could be a possibility over there. There might, might be some fighting in the war room. Is it quorum? Is it Lloyd? It seems like it's going to be somebody. Maybe it's neither. Uh, that would be a, you know, hell of a, hell of a turn there. Uh, he'll be 20. He's 23 right now. So I think he turned 23 in January. So a little older than some of the guys up above, but a little younger than, than uh, Blake Corum. Uh, but I, I, what he has is a, is a bit of a curious career started off at, at South Carolina and, and just, you know, I was big Co's podcast guy on, on our podcast started this thing with us. And, and I was talking to him about him and he was like, Bo, I, he was like, I didn't even, I don't know why they didn't use him enough. He was like, they didn't even use him enough to know to, for me to know how good he was. Um, mm-hmm. So it was just kind of a weird situation. Now I will say I was able to find uh, three or four games of Lloyd as a game cock. And I think the, the, the tape might be, I think I like the, the, the Gamecock tape a little bit better than the USC tape. Now, the USC stats are really, really good. Um, but there was just some things at USC where he he looked like a, like the style of runner that I prefer. Um, so I, I know that that's in there. Um, but then some more, I think, a little bit more exciting stuff going on at, at USC, um, potentially there for uh, Marshawn Lloyd. Ball security, I guess, would be a big question mark there. A lot, lot of fumbles. He only had three on the year, but when you watch the tape, there's definitely more that were, were gotten back. Uh, so ball security is 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 a flag that, that you raise a little bit there, but the breakaway percentage, I don't know if we mentioned that one, but that was really good. That was eighth overall. The missed force tackles are ridiculous. Elusive rate, rating was, was really good. Um, and, you know, 25 targets and 18 catches in 22 18 targets and 13 receptions in 23 i believe was the number i had let me double check that um uh, but you know i thought i thought there would be some more receptions on his resume there but he's i'm not worried at all about uh his he didn't he doesn't necessarily hit that receiving threshold that some people want to see um is that anything that worries you i think he's a very good receiver uh no, no. Short answer is no, man. Uh, people, I think people overreact to college running backs not hitting certain thresholds uh, in the receiving game, and it 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 doesn't bother me, man, because there's been so many good college running backs that that just didn't do a whole lot, and it's because they weren't asked to. That is that is the number one reason why. And I know Casey, I know you're a huge advocate for. for Ken Walker, he is a perfect example, man. People thought he couldn't catch in college, and like, not that he's been like a dominant, you know, receiving threat in the NFL, but he's shown that he is clearly capable. That's just one of many examples. So, no, uh, to answer your question, does not bother me at all. I think Marshawn no. Lloyd can catch. No, me neither. And I, I think he he has a three down set potential. Um, I think you know maybe maybe he be a better in, in a potential committee where he's kind of the lead dog, but, and really at the end of the day, that's, that's most of, of the NFL. Uh, it feels like Benson and Brooks have that profile a little better to be all three downs, but Lloyd certainly has the size and the speed and all those other things to, to back it up. Maybe we just haven't seen it quite as much overall his is over his collegiate uh, kind of career always, you know, kind of for one reason or another, sharing some of the backfield. Um, but I, I don't view that as a negative, but I do really like Marshawn Lloyd, maybe not as much as, as some people. I know um, fantasy pros guys have, have Marshawn Lloyd pretty high, um, but I don't think we're, we're terribly low on him. He just wouldn't be my first RB off the board. I, I like I like where you have him here. I like, I like mm-hmm. Wright and Lloyd kind of being that next batch of guys with Corum. I could put Corum in the, in the tier with those guys. He just... You know, like you said, the, the age is is something that you probably got to knock knock him down a little bit for. So, uh, I think that's kind of where I'm at with with these running backs right now. And anything else you got before we wrap up? 
I'll, I'll mention a few guys that yeah. could have been in the conversation. The combine didn't do him any favors. It was Audric Estime running back sure. out of Notre Dame, right? Unfortunately, did not test well. And then on top of that, we had um, a kid out of Oregon, Bucky, Bucky Irving, Irving, man. Yeah. He just... Oh, God, there's a lot that I like about Bucky Irving. I really, really was a big advocate for him. And I'm not saying like his career is over. I, I don't like him anymore. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that I do like him a little bit less. He is a little bit lower in my rankings. He's become more of an outlier now if, if mm-hmm. he hits. So, mm-hmm. Yep. And, you know, of course, you know, I, I, you know, whenever I think of Bucky Irving, man, Kyron Williams is always the first guy that mm-hmm. comes to mind. And I'm thinking yeah. there absolutely is a path to for success for him it's just you know again you're betting on outliers and and hey man there's outliers that hit every single season so i I do like a lot about bucky irving um you know you got will shipley dylan johnson kendall milton jace mcclellan and then who's the uh who am i missing man i'm missing uh jalen out of alabama who am i missing um mcmillan or, or uh, did, did I already say him? Or Jace McClellan? Jace I'm sorry, McClellan, I did say yeah. him. My my apologies. But man, these are some of the other running backs that come to mind. And like I have them in the very next tier. Um, this class, I think that the RB class as a whole. I think people are starting to come around a little bit more. I think people are starting to get in on them a little bit more. I think the fade for the class as a whole has gone a little too far, and I think people are starting to get back in and saying, you know what, man. These guys are serviceable. Like w- w- we can work with them. Um, of course, there's no Bijan. Of course, there's no Jameer Gibbs. But uh, this class is starting to uh, look a little bit better, in my opinion. I think the NFL Combine, for the most part, was beneficial to the sure. RB class. Yeah, I, w- I would. I would tend to agree there. I think. I think we've got a lot of really good players and, and some depth I, uh, because there isn't, you know, two ridiculous running backs. People are are down on that, and there's only one tight end really that everybody loves, and then there's you know, the top seven guys, but I, you know, and there's, there's certainly going to be some busts uh, through throughout there's busts every single year, but I think this is a pretty good class, a pretty deep class. I think we're going to get some, some really, really good players and some great ones at the top of it. So, um, you know, all through the second, I'm excited to draft guys. We get into the mid third, there's still guys that I'm really excited to draft. So, and some of those guys are going to be those outliers that, that pop. Um, so it, the way I look at outliers is, you know, you don't want to rely on the outliers hitting, but like, I'm going to do all the work that I can and then I'm going to put myself to, in position to draft two or three of those guys, and I hope one of them hits. And it doesn't mm-hmm. even necessarily be a lifelong hit. It just needs to be enough to get value that more value than I paid for um, in a lot of those cases. Um, but, you know, the Puka Nakua's and the Tank Dells, they're all still on my team from last year. I, you know, I, I deem those guys being like, I, they're too good for me to trade right now. I'm not, I'm not going to do it. I believe in them. But other guys I've, I've certainly moved off of, and some has been great that I moved off of, and some was like, oh, you're an idiot for moving – uh, off that guy so uh, you know the fact of the matter is it's usually more beneficial to move off because they are quote unquote an outlier so it, it it might not work out but you know this is fantasy football man we're having fun we're having a good time nobody has all the answers no everybody's looking for a cheat sheet it doesn't really exist um so you know i'm not a huge analytical guy i don't you know i know a lot of the thresholds and a lot of the percentages and all those things but somehow some way i keep coming up with you know, pretty good draft class results. And I don't base my whole, you know, whole shit on those. And and I don't even like to look at them at first. I like to kind of watch the film and then go, go look at those and see if those two things kind of marry up. And when they do, we've really got something. And when they don't, then I start looking at context. Uh, Xavier, Xavier Leggett is one of those guys. I, I said on the last show that we did, you know, we don't have time to talk about it. And we don't need to talk about it today, but then all day on Twitter today, there was, Oh, well, imagine that context to Xavier Leggett of why maybe it took him so long to break out. That's crazy. Instead of just marking him with a red flag and throwing him to the fucking ground and being like, oh, he's trash, which is what my problem with the analytical community is, is that they just they're such staunch dickheads of the way they respond to things. That it's like, can we take a second to look about the hows and whys here? Um, and then but again, there's a lot of them that are really good. There's a lot of terrible film guys. Some people probably think I'm terrible, whatever. Um, I haven't dove into, um, I've seen some Bucky. I've seen some estime. I haven't seen any Shipley tape. I've watched Shipley through his career. Um, I haven't, I got to check out Garendo. Uh, Tyrone Tracy has been popping up all over mm-hmm. the place Had a good combine. Got to check him out. He's a receiver converted to running back from Purdue. Um, so, and then 
Cami Vidal from Troy, or I don't even know how I'm, I've never even heard of him. Um, I, you know, I just heard them from the combine and, and I just went and looked at his stat. They're pretty good. So I just didn't want to not do all those guys extensively and then, and then throw them in these rankings, which is why I let Austin's rankings lead the way, which I, I, I thought they were really good. And I, I really enjoyed uh, talking about them. Anything else before we uh, wrap up here, Austin? Yeah, man, I think this was a good balance because, you know, Casey, you're definitely more of a film guy. I lean more analytics. So I think that, you know, as we, you know, put our heads together and we just talk about this RB class, like, you know, it's it's a good exercise. It's good to see where your head's at and uh, just kind of your from your perspective. Uh, this was fun, man. Like, yeah. I, I always love talking about, you know, the 2024 wide receivers, but I'll tell you what, man. There's something special about talking about dynasty running backs. Oh, you're sure. never you're never gonna get bored talking or listening about dynasty running backs. Like there's just only so so many of them that are valuable, right? There's there's so few, and um, it's always the what could be. Like we don't know what these kids could turn into. Uh, we just know that you know there's gonna be a few that hit. It's just a matter of who it is. And and uh, I'm excited, man. This is we're we're another day, another week closer to the NFL draft so uh looking forward to it man this is this has been great yeah we, we've had a lot of later round running backs pot at least one or, or two a year to, to have some value so there's there's probably going to be another one this year um but yeah no running backs were my first true love uh in dynasty for <laughs> sure um you know had to had to, you gotta you gotta ebb and flow with the times i love running backs but that's not the currency right now the currency in Superflex is some quarterbacks and then wide receivers. Everybody wants the wide receivers. Um, now you get in some home leagues and they're still, they're still a little bit more favor in the running backs. At least a lot of mine are, but and everything else, wide receivers are certainly the currency. So they're definitely uh, the ones that you, you know, a lot of people spend a lot of time on it and, and for, for good reason, understandable. Um, but when that's what the market's telling you, that's where you got to go and that's what you got to invest in, but there's still uh, some need and, um, some good running backs and some disrespect for the running backs out there and you need them to win. Um, so when you can find them in good spots and you can do your research and be, and be studied up on these guys, uh, it can really pay off. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one. You can catch us on the Patreon for a $5 holly. You get three extra episodes over there. Be sure to like subscribe, comment below all that jazz five-star review on the podcast, Charleston city paper for your boys hitting the best of podcast. That link will be in the description. We've, we've been voted for the best local podcast. They, they throw a nice, one of the better parties in Charleston of the year. It's pretty epic. So if you guys want to go and vote for your boys to, to try and take that down, that would be really cool. Uh, make sure you go follow Austin on the on the Twitters and, and really all socials. You can catch him at Austin Abbott, FF, two B's and two T's and two F's. Uh, he's he's crushing content over there, putting out a lot of fun stuff. Um, and we will be back um, relatively soon with I want to I want to take, you know, we've, we've done it before, but I want to start now get, getting back into um you know, rookie fever is upon us. So let's go figure out what else we can get for the known that's out there for these rookies and see how that balances out. Cause I've played it both ways and, and it's beneficial both ways. So it's nice to go ahead and spend a decent amount of this time from now until the draft, figuring out exactly where these guys are and what they're worth. And if you could, you know, flip, uh, you know, can I flip Brian Thomas for Jordan Addison? Would you flip Brian Thomas for Jordan Addison or the pick the rights to have Brian Thomas for, for Jordan Addison at this point? So uh, we'll, we'll be getting back to that. We got Austin coming at you a bunch more. We're going to have JB on Snoog uh, hit us up. He wants to come back on. So we, we got all, we got all go. the uh, rookie content you could possibly want uh, and, and some good guys to talk about it. So we appreciate you, Austin, buddy. Love you. Good to see you and looking forward to the next one. Peace. Peace.